Um, I'm so happy to be here to uh, present my work. Uh, today I'm going to show you from uh, my work from very, very beginning to the most recent project, including many uh, disaster relief projects, which I have been working all over the world uh, nearly 25 years. Um, I started working in disaster area because I was very disappointed uh, my own profession as architect. Because I found out mostly we are working for privileged people who has money and power. Because money and power is invisible, they hire us to build monumental architecture in order to show off their power and money to the public. I'm not saying I'm not interested in designing monumental building. When this becomes the, the, the symbol of the city, people are proud of, I think that is really a wonderful opportunity for architect. But I thought we should use our knowledge and the, the experience, not only for privileged people, but also the people, general public, even people who lost their houses by natural disasters. But I must say, they are no longer natural. They are becoming man-made disasters. For example, earthquake by itself doesn't kill people, but collapse of building kill people. That is our responsibility as architects. But normally we are looking for new job, new project. When city is going to be rebuilt after the disaster, I found out people are suffering with very poor living condition before city are rebuilt. They are suffering with very poor condition in evacuation facilities and poor temporary houses made by government. I thought that is also a good opportunity for us as architects to improve their living condition uh, where when they are in the, this, uh, the evacuation facility or uh, temporary housing. So that is why I start working in those kind of areas. Um, okay, let me start my slide, please. <clears throat> um, I went, uh, after I finished high school in Japan, I went to US and I got into the Cooper Union in New York. And immediately after I graduated from school, I came back to Tokyo, 1985, in order to start my own practice without any working experience. Uh, because I didn't have a working experience, I couldn't start designing architecture, but I started designing uh, exhibitions. This is one of the first exhibitions I designed for my favorite architect, Alba Arto from Finland. Since I traveled a lot uh, in Finland, uh, and because I love Alba Arto, and I wanted to bring his exhibition, and also I want to design the exhibition interior like his architecture. However, I had a very limited budget, so I couldn't use uh, like wood, like uh, Alberto always used. Also, I didn't want to use, I don't want to waste such a precious material like wood for temporary use. So I was looking for some alternative material to replace wood, and I found out paper tube made of recycled paper, which was all over my studio. Those days in the 80s, uh, we used to use a paper, uh, fax with a roll of uh, paper. When we finished the uh, fax paper, always uh, paper tube remained. Also, we used to draw a lot on the tracing paper. Also, the, the, we, when we finished, there is a paper tube remain. I hate to throw things away, so I always kept them to use for something else. And I thought this material can be some, uh, uh, something to replace wood. And I, I found out it's very inexpensive. We can make any diameter, any length. So here I use small diameter tubes, uh, like uh, Alberto's B Priest library. And the larger diameter was used as a freestanding partitions. Then I found out that this material is much stronger than I expected. Next, please. Then I, I start testing to use this material for building structure. 
Then, next piece, in 1990, I got the opportunity to design the temporary exhibition hall, and I used this material for the, the, the uh, exterior interior wall. This was too difficult for me that time in order to get the government permission to use such an unusual material for uh, building structure. So here, the building is made of steel chrome with steel space frame. The, the paper tube are used as a freestanding wall for interior and exterior without supporting the roof. So this was much easier to get this permission uh, by submitting the testing data. There is 330 tubes. The diameter is 55 centimeter. The wall thickness is 50 millimeter. Of course, inside is empty. Uh, there is uh, it's eight meter in length. There are a few tubes. It's bigger. It's here. The diameter is 120 centimeter. Inside is a toilet. Um, just in case, if you finish your toilet paper, you can tear us off inside the wall. <laughs> Next, please. In order to get government permission to use paper chip for the apartment building, I had to design my own weekend house. Although I, have, I don't have a weekend, I'm not the kind of person to enjoy weekend, but that was the only way uh, to prove to get the government permission. So I spent a year designing, uh, proving this, and finally I got permission to build. Uh, so this has become first permanent building out of paper tube as a main structure. Uh, the, 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 this house is still empty like this because it's not used. I don't, I don't have a weekend. Next, please. <coughs> Next, please. <coughs> a few years later, I was asked to design the, the structure uh, for the, 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 the construction company uh, in a very heavy snow area. Uh, carpenter want to walk the, the roof by themselves without depending on steel structure. And uh, also this has to be inexpensive, so I decided to use the paper chip again as a permanent building. But uh, as you see, the way it's used is an art structure. It's different from the, what I use for my weekend house. I had to test again to get a new permission. And this building still exists after 20 years. Next, please. Next, please. Um, I started using paper chip for the building when, before people start talking like a, a so-called ecology and sustainability and so on. This become big fashion of the day. Uh, but uh, when this expo was held in uh, the two, year 2000 in the city of Hanover in Germany, everybody started talking about ecology and sustainability. That is why the main theme of the expo was environmental issue. Because I was the only architect in Japan using recyclable material for building, I was chosen to build government permission, uh, government pavilion. And uh, uh, then the the, the goal of design, normally goal of design is when building is completed, but the goal of my design was when building was demolished. Because the expo is over in half a year, each country make the, the temporary structure and dismantle them to create a lot of industrial waste. So that is why making temporary building is not very envir environmental friendly. So my idea was how to recycle or reuse most of the building material when building was demolished. I worked with local paper chip company in Germany. As a part of the contract, that they have to collect all the building material, the paper chip, after building was demolished to recycle as a part of the contract. Foundation, normally, as you know, the concrete is such a difficult material to recycle. So I didn't want to use the concrete. I made a wooden box filled with sand as a foundation. Paper chip structure was connected to this wooden box. And also the, the, the connections joint, it's just a fabric tape. Membrane, normally we use a PVC membrane. PVC is not environmental friendly material. So I made a membrane out of paper, waterproofed, and the fire protected according to German regulation. All the erection was done by hand. This yellow scaffolding 
we can rotate by hand to, little by, to push up little by little to create three-dimensional curvature. And I was very lucky to collaborate with Professor Fry Otto in order to invent first paper chip grid chain structure. Next, please. So this is uh, the completion. As, you, as I explained, this is just fabric tape to connect the two paper tube. Next, please. This is called Nomadic Museum. This is a museum for uh, Canadian artist, Gregory Cobero. He asked me to design his own, uh, own uh, museum, which travel from city to city, country to country. This is over 4,000 square meter, which travel from city to city. And the challenge is how to make a building quickly, how to transport building economically. That was the challenge. I decided to use used shipping container of 20 feet, not because shipping container can be traveled. I chose a shipping container as a structure because you can find same shipping container anywhere in the world because shipping container is an international standard. It's available anywhere. So I just rented this shipping container near New York only du during the exhibition. After exhibition is over, we just return to the original shipyard and then we moved to California, Los Angeles, without shipping container, because, because we can rent locally in Los Angeles. I made a checkerboard pattern. Uh, there is a, the connect, existing connection in the corner so that the, uh, the, 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 there's a connected with existing connection. But I, this was built on the wooden pier, which is very old pier. Uh, the, actually, Titanic was supposed to arrive here, but unfortunately, she didn't come. But this is such an old wooden pier, so that's why I may have to make the structure as light as possible. There's a 200 meter in length, and the, 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 the roof is supported by paper chip of 10 meter, and Gregory's work was exhibited in between. Next, please. Then we went to Los Angeles, Santa Monica Beach. What we got the, was a, uh, the small parking lot. We couldn't fit the, the 200 meter in length one in, you know, in New York, so I had to divide to the two of 100 meter gallery. Also, Gregory asked me to design additional theater space. So I just put the two gallery with the space and put new membrane, uh, creating the theater space. So building became 50% bigger than New York, but the number of the container are same. This is uh, the one I, when I brought this in Tokyo. As you see, the color of the container is different because this is what I rented in Tokyo. Next, please. This is a house I call a picture window house. Normally, picture window is small window framing the beautiful landscape of exterior, like a painting. Instead of making small picture window, I made a picture window of 22 meter uh, spanning by opening sliding doors, we can create a horizontal picture window. Next, please. So this is a picture window framing beautiful horizontal ocean view. Next, please. The, this house was built in Sri Lanka. The th also theme is uh, making picture window. This house was built on the hill, and uh, uh, this was hilly site without cutting the, the, the hill flat. I want to take advantage of hilly site, so there's a different uh, stages uh, connected by stair. And also, the, the climate is so good, so that I want to take advantage of natural ventilations. Uh, I work with all the local craftsmen using all, only locally available materials. Next, please. Then finally, uh, we get in the, the, the space in the, on the top with a big picture window connecting the the, the ocean and the swimming pool and uh, inside the space. <coughs> Next, please. Uh, this is a house in, in Japan. It's rather a big house as a house in Japan. Uh, I utilize com uh, paper tube for building. Also, I utilize other industrial material for, for uh, residential use. For example, this one is a big glass shutter. Normally, they are used for the, the fire station. Uh, so when client want to go to swimming pool directly from living room, just, just they have to push the button 
Then the glass shutter goes up immediately. So that's, this is the, 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 the tool to connect inside and outside. Even this small family room, when glass shutter is open, the inside of the space is totally connected to the exterior. Uh, the always, the, because there's no, unfortunately, no wonderful view outside, I tried to connect all the rooms with the courtyard and swimming pool and some gardens. Next, please. Uh, again, this is a building with a glass shutter. This is a headquarter for the Swatch Group in Tokyo. This was a competition. And uh, as you may know, Ginza is the land which is the most expensive commercial land in the world. That's why the, the, the site is quite narrow and very deep. Uh, there was a few uh, atriums requested and three story high. And I didn't want to depend on the air conditioning uh, for the good seasons. So in good season, we can open the glass shutter to utilize natural ventilation without air conditioning. Also, the, 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 the challenge was the how to give the storefront to the seven different brand name of the, the Swatch Group own. You may know Swatch Group own not only Swatch, but Omega, Tissot, Jacket Row, Brown Pan, so on, the, the many famous brand names. Because the, the, the storefront is so small, if we have one boutique in front of the commercial street, less of six boutiques has to be the back or upstairs or downstairs. I thought that is unfair because only one boutique has a good storefront in front of the commercial street, the rest of them doesn't. So my challenge was, it was not requested by competition, I wanted uh, give the all, uh, storefront to all the seven boutiques. So what I did is opening uh, the in front and the back by glass shutter, creating passage for the public with some green wall and some water future. Along this passage, it's not only shortcut to the, the back street, but also this is a nice comfortable street with green. There is a nine, uh, seven different glass showrooms of the different boutiques brand names. So you can take a look at the latest uh, collections. Next, please. But that glass showroom is not big enough uh, to see all the collections. So if you want to see more collections, you just have to push button. Then you, you, you go up to go to the main boutiques. Because this is made of a hydraulic elevator. Each brand name has their own hydraulic elevator showroom on the ground floor, bringing the customer to the upper floors. This is a, uh, uh, the, uh, the fourth floor atrium. When glass shutter open, this becomes semi-outdoor space. Uh, there is some story, actually it's a real story behind this giraffe. Um, just before the completion of the building, the president of Swatch uh, uh, came to see the building and she asked me, where's the giraffe? During the competition, uh, stage, I draw a giraffe in the section drawing in order to show the height of the, the, uh, the atrium. She thought that was part of my design, and this was not, actually. That's why she said, unless uh, I, she, she, she sees a giraffe in the building, she doesn't want to accept as uh, the completion of the building. So I had to hire by myself to hire some sculptor to make a giraffe in wood to get the building completed. That's a real story. Next, please. Next, please. This is a condominium, a small condominium in New York, Manhattan. Uh, again, the shutter was the main element of the building. When I went to the site, uh, this is a Chelsea area in New York. Uh, as you may know, there's many galleries and warehouse in Chelsea Street. And uh, I went to the end of the day most of the galleries and warehouse are closed with metal shutter. So I thought metal shutter is very contextual material for this street. I decided to cover my, uh, uh, my condominium with metal shutter. This is standard metal shutter with perforated metal, so you can see through. Every apartment has a double height living room with so-called bifolding door. This glass window can be folded to open totally to connect inside and outside. And metal shutter are used as a security 
and also for to use as a kind of uh, the shading uh, for the west sun. Next, please. So this is uh, the typical room uh, with the bifolding door open inside or outside, and uh, the metal shutter be, can be closed, but still you can see through the view. During the winter, there's many mosquitoes in New York. Also, this metal shutter, preferred metal shutter, works out well as a mosquito net. We still have uh, natural ventilations. Next, please. Um, this was my temporary office in Paris. As you know, this is a famous Pompidou Center designed by Richard Rogers and Lenzo Piano, completed 1977. 2004, they decided to open the Satellite Museum in the city of Metz. Uh, I was very lucky to win this competition, and uh, I wanted to open my own office in Paris, but it was so expensive to rent office in, in, in Paris. So when I met the president of Pompidou Center first time, I proposed him if he can, he lent me the rooftop, rooftop or uh, terrace, I wanted to make my own temporary uh, office, and he agreed uh, uh, as long as I can show inside of my office to some of the important visitors, uh, uh, showing them the, 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 how, the progress of the new Pompidou Center. So that was the deal. So I immediately brought my student from Tokyo to work with a French student during the summer to build this office by herself with a paper chip structure with a wooden joint. Uh, this was a 35 meter in length and only 4.5 in, in width. And uh, because the, the building Pompidou Center was so difficult, we spent six years. And so I occupied this space six years without paying any rent but we get a wonderful view of the Paris, so it was so comfortable. But there's only one disadvantage. When my, com my friend come to see me, because we are part of the exhibition, they had to buy ticket downstairs to see me. That was very inconvenient. <laughs> Next, please. This is uh, something I pro presented for the competition. This is a map of the city of Metz. This is a train station. You can come here uh, by uh, uh, TGB only 90 minutes, and this was outside, south of the train station, which was totally empty. Center of the city is south part of the train station. There's very famous cathedral, and uh, I wanted to connect my museum physic, uh, visually somehow with the center of the city. So this is a model I submitted for competition. There is a so-called gallery tubes, three of them stacking on top of each other. A width is 15 meter, and length is uh, 90 meter. And they are stacking with uh, the, the shifted 45 degree each. Um, end of this gallery, there's a big window, uh, like a picture window, framing the important monument of the city. Top of the tubes, f f uh, facing to the important cathedral, framing the picture window. Second tube is fra uh, the f heading to the uh, train station. Because the city of Metz is very close to the German border, always after the war, all the city are occupied by German, and there's many important traditional German architecture there. That has become a very important history of the city, uh, including this train station. So second tube is uh, framing the, the, this train station. The roof is made in timber. Long time ago, I bought this uh, Chinese traditional bamboo hut, and uh, I was very amazed. This was very architectonic for me. As you see, that the, 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 there is a structure woven bamboo and uh, the waterproofed by oil paper. Underneath, there is a dry leaves as an insulation. It's just like a building: insulation, structure, and waterproofing. And I was, uh, I tried a few uh, different. Uh, for uh, this idea for different building as experiment, and finally I uh, finally realized uh, design roof, designing roof for this project. <coughs> uh, as you may see, the, this is uh, the, the model for Pompidou Center, but it's the same geometry with hexagon. Um, so I had to make I have to make a decision of the geometry dividing this roof. Let's say we divide by square or rectangular. It's the easiest way to divide. 
However, because a square or rectangular is, doesn't have any in-plane stiffness, so you need a bracing, cross bracing. If you divide by triangle, but it's also easy, and you don't need any bracing because it's totally strong in, uh, for the in-plane stiffness. <coughs> However, if you see the connections, the joint, there are three elements is connecting. So connection is very complicated. Uh, against this, is only two elements is meeting, but this three elements, so the joint is more complicated. The, this original geometry from a bamboo hut, hexagon and triangle, the hexagon doesn't have implant stiffness, but because of the tri small triangles, this, we don't need the bracing. However, all the connection, as you see, is only two elements is meeting, that is why it's very simple and we don't need any bracing. So that is why I chose this original geometry and the upper layer and the lower, uh, upper cord and lower cord is connected with a piece of uh, wood, like a filander uh, truss. Next, please. <coughs> this is the completion. Ground floor, they are covered by glass shutter. Uh, after the opening hour, this can be totally open to connect inside outside. These are picture windows. Next, please. This is a picture window frame in the cathedral. This is when the glass shutter is open. Inside of the atrium is totally connected with the outside. This is the main uh, steel elevator core, elevator and stair. And this timber lattice work is hung. So this is a, uh, uh, the, the tensile structure. Because it's tensile structure, it's much better that each element is overlapping instead of aligning. If each element is aligned, we need some metal connections. I don't want to use any metal connection. I want to design the timber structure only with, metal, with timber without metal connection in order to take advantage of the, the timber itself. <coughs> Next, please. <coughs> This, uh, while I was designing the Pompidou Center, I was asked to design a golf clubhouse in the South uh, Korea. Because I don't play golf, I didn't know what is inside of the clubhouse. Only my uh, experience and memory was when I was very small, my father used to take me to golf practicing range. Um, that those days, when I was very small, we used to put the ball on wooden tee. Now it's made in plastic, but those days it's made in uh, the wood. So this is a, the, like a wooden tee shape. So because of my small, uh, my memory was a long time ago, I decided to choose this shape. And the same geometry from uh, the Pompidou Center. However, this is simple, simple compression arch instead of a tensile structure. That is why each element can be aligned without any uh, metal joint. We just have to cut to join them traditionally without any metal connection. It doesn't matter because it's just simple compression arch. It's like a Gothic uh, uh, cross bolt structure in wood. Next, please. As you see, each element is aligning and uh, they are the coming together to create the each post. Next, please. This is a seven-story uh, timber office structure in, uh, uh, in Zurich, uh, Switzerland. Uh, the company called Tamedia, this newspaper company. Again, I didn't want to use any metal connections. So this is the connection I designed. Uh, two, of, two beams. Uh, both sides of the timber columns. And the uh, perpendicular beam is, uh, profile is over, inserted, because it's over shape, the, 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 it doesn't rotate. So this become quite good uh, uh, rigid connection for lateral force without any metal connections. Next, please. The cladding is made of the standard aluminum windows. Just I, I extended a traditional facade next door to create the, 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 this uh, metal uh, uh, curtain wall. 
uh, where you have uh, many uh, horizontal lines, there are glass shutter which can be totally open to create semi-indoor outdoor space like this. Otherwise, timber structure is totally exposed. Next, please. This is a small museum in Colorado, Aspen, Aspen, Colorado, in the United States. Uh, built uh, in the end of the down, old downtown uh, area, which has many small uh, brick brown uh, rectangular buildings. So I want to design the building which fit into the context with brown brick, brown cubical building, but without brick. So this is a Spanish material called, called Prodima. This is made in paper with resin, it's fire protected, and it's woven. Depending on the, the, what is behind, the, the density is changed. The site was too small for the given program. Normally on the ground floor, there is the entrance lobby. First you go into lobby, then you go to galleries. But there was no space for the entrance lobby on the ground floor. So you have to go to a uh, rooftop with this semi outdoor space, the stair, or this glass elevator to rooftop before you visit the gallery. Next, please. Then you find the beautiful mountains. Aspen is the most famous ski resort in the United States. So first you enjoy the mountain view and come down to the galleries. I decided to do this because this is, a very, as, as I said, Aspen is famous for skiing. When you do skiing, first you climb or you take a lift to go up to the top of the mountain and enjoy the mountain view and come down little by, by little by skiing. So it's just like that. So you take a stair or a lift to go up to the top of the building to enjoy the mountain view and come down to the gallery little by little. So that is uh, the, the, the way I decide to make uh, the uh, sequence of the, the, uh, the building. Next, uh, even the, sorry, the, the, the roof is made of timber space frame because it's a heavy uh, snow area. So we have to anticipate the additional snow load and also the uh, ex extra uh, sickness for the fire protection. Otherwise, there's no metal connections. Upper cord and lower cord is just connected, curved diagonal pieces, because it's continuous curved. You just, I just need one board to connect all the pieces without any complicated metal connections. Next, please. <coughs> This is a, a, another art museum in south of Japan called Oita Prefecture Museum. Uh, this city is very famous for the, the bamboo basket, bamboo craft, uh, so that the, I wanted to use some kind of contextual material. Uh, there is a more uh, the galleries with a very uh, uh, tight condition for climate control. Uh, the structure is made of the, the timber like uh, the, the bamboo, uh, woven bamboo structure. And the lower part is more open, flexible galleries without, uh, the, 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 the taking, without uh, having too much uh, the climate control. I wanted to open the museum to the public, to the street, as much as possible. Because normally, the like, museum is like a white cube or a black box. You don't know what is inside until you pay the tuition and you, and, uh, administration and you find out what is inside. Uh, however, there are many people are not interested in contemporary art. They don't want to pay for something they don't know. But I wanted to open the museum for the anyone uh, uh, for the street. So the, on the ground floor, I made the so-called bifolding door, which I made in New York. Uh, this is in Japan, but it's bigger. So that in cl a nice climate, under the nice climate, always the bifolding that can be open to take advantage of natural ventilation without air conditioning. And also there are many exhibitions can be enjoyed by uh, the public without paying the, the, the ticket. So even this street can be closed to have some event, like a con continuation of inside. So I, that is the way I made the museum very flexible and open. Next, please. This is by folding door open. And the gallery on the ground floor, in order to connect with the outside, the roof ceiling is hung. So there are no pillars underneath. There is a movable partition, so you can close totally with climate control, or you can divide to different sides of the gallery, or you can remove totally 
empty. And then you can go up to the third floor. There's another gallery for the more closed gallery with the, 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 the again, the, the, like bamboo natural, uh, lat lattice walk, bringing natural light to the lobby. Next, please. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of the most recent projects in, in Paris. This is La Seine Musical. This is a music uh, auditorium complex. Uh, under, inside of this X uh, shape, there is a uh, the classical hall for 1,200 seat. Underneath of this uh, hilly landscape, there is a multi-purpose hall for the 4,000 seat. And this egg was made in timber uh, structure. The, this was competition. Uh, the island used to be owned by Renault uh, Automobile Company, and then in the 90s they moved out, and the island was empty totally for, for a while. And as you may remember, Pino Foundation organized a competition for art museum, and Tadao Ando won the competition, and he started the construction. But Mr. Pino uh, had some problem with government, he decided to cancel the project. And so first thing after I won the competition, the uh, first thing I had to do was removing the piles made by Tadao Ando. Uh, the city wanted to make some... Mu this island is very narrow in the Seine River and like a ship shape. The, the master plan of the, the island was made by uh, Jean Nouvel. He wanted uh, each building as a kind of appearance of the old Luno factory with exposed concrete. And uh, the, the also city wanted to make building uh, very uh, symbolic because this area, this particular site, work as a kind of waste gate, uh, come, uh, uh, entrance of the, the Paris uh, as a waste gate. So city asked us to design some kind of symbolic uh, building. Um, in order to make something symbolic, I also we are uh, requested to use uh, solar panels. Instead of putting solar panel on the roof to be hidden, I made a kind of so-called sail. Normally sail is something to receive wind power, but this is sail to receive the sun power. So this is made of a solar panel, which move depending on the location of the sun to follow the sun in order to have a more uh, uh, efficiency generating energy and also this create a shading on the glass, uh, glass windows. Next please. Go back. I'm, this is one of the biggest LED screen in Europe. I uh, put the LED screen because of my experience when I was a student first time, when I went to Vienna first time, I couldn't afford buying a ticket for the opera house, but there was a small screen outside of the theater. We could see what is happening inside. I thought that's a very kind idea. So that is why I wanted to have a big screen to show inside of the theater without paying the ticket, even with the small babies, you can enjoy in the exterior what's happening inside. Uh, this is uh, the kind of the corridor, uh, long passage uh, here, over 300 meters. This is extension of the, the John Ma master plan of a commercial street extending. So along this passage, there's two foyer of two theaters, so that during the uh, the daytime, anytime you can, public can come into this passage to enjoy the atmosphere of the of the uh, of the the, uh, the the lobby foyer of the theater along the the, uh, the commercial street. Uh, this is uh, the flex flexible theater for 4,000 seat. Uh, actually, the, for the opening, uh, Bob Dylan, uh, he hesitate to receive the, the Nobel, uh, Nobel Prize. Finally, he came to Sweden to pick up. On the way back to US, he was very kind to stop by this concert hall to make an opening concert here. Next, please. This is uh, the, the foyer, small foyer for the, uh, the classical music hall. I made uh, a new uh, uh, mosaic tile. This tile is uh, like a uh, it changes the color depending on the, the sun, shade, sun, sun angle of the sun from green to, to, to red. Inside of the theater, um, the, uh, this is uh, the different diameter of the paper tube. I work with uh, the acoustical engineer in order to make good acoustical effect. Uh, I use also paper tube. It's fire protected with uh, 
uh, different diameter. Even the, the seating is also made of paper chip with a cushion around. Next, please. This is a recent project in Japan. This is Fuji Mountain World Heritage Center. Fuji Mountain, Mount Fuji was chosen as a World Heritage by UNESCO, and the local prefecture decided to make a museum. This was a competition. I expected every competitor will design beautiful roof shape like Fuji Mountain. I thought uh, that is a common idea. Uh, so I did this as the other way around. Around the Fuji Mountain, there are many lakes having reflected the shape of that mountain beautifully. So I did the other way around. Uh, so I designed the building upside down of the mountain Fuji. And uh, I took advantage of the natural spring from Fuji Mountain for the air conditioning. And after that, the uh, spring water is used for the, the air conditioning, released to the, the pond outside to have a reflection of the building. Uh, inside of this building, there is a slope, lamps. It's a kind of the uh, way to, to experience mount, uh, the next please, a climbing mountain. So along this, next please. So you can climb a slope and you can enjoy the beautiful uh, the, the video work or which you can see different height of the, uh, the Fuji mountain so that you can feel like a climbing mountain. Finally, you approach to the, the pavilion on the top of the building. Next, please. With beautiful picture window framing the real Fuji mountain. Next, please. Now, going to the, uh, the, the refugee uh, uh, situation. Uh, this two photo is coming from the Rwanda, 1994, when there's a, a two tribes uh, fight each other. Over two million people became refugees. And I was very shocked to see this photo because the, the people are freezing with blanket. I thought most of the African country is very warm without any heating, but they are freezing with blanket. And I found out during rainy season, uh, the, because of the shelter given by United Nations was so poor, they couldn't keep them warm enough. I thought we had to improve the shelter, otherwise any, any medical care doesn't help them. So I went to United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in Geneva to propose my idea without any appointment. I was very lucky to meet the German architect who was responsible for shelter construction. That time, uh, the, the, I was uh, chosen, I was uh, uh, hired as a consultant because of the following reason. This is a typical uh, refugee shelter made by United Nations. They give them the plastic sheet of four meter by six meter, and refugee has to cut the trees by themselves to make a frame. Over two million people cut the trees, so that this area used to be the forest, but all the trees are gone, and they go much further to cut more trees. So this became very serious deforestation, environmental problem. So that the United Nations start providing them aluminum pipes because they cannot encourage uh, the environmental uh, crisis, so that, the, that they provide the aluminum pipes. But aluminum is very expensive material locally, so that's why, that is why refugees sell them out for money and uh, cut trees again. So the providing aluminum pipe was not a good solution. That is the, the time I proposed my idea to make a shelter out of a recycled paper tube. That is why I was accepted as a consultant. Next, please. Uh, this is three different prototypes. I was lucky to build with the support of the Vitra. As you may know, the Vitra is one of the most important furniture company in Switzerland. They have a important building. This is a furniture museum and factory designed by Frank Gehry. Behind this, there is a seminar house designed by Tadawando. Further right, there is a factory designed by Nicholas Grimshaw, Alvaro Siza. They have their own fire station designed by Zaha Hadid. So this company has the most expensive collection of architecture, and my tent becomes their cheapest collection. <laughs> this is a Bimba camp in Rwanda. Already Rwanda refugee came back to home, accepting refugee from Congo. And I went to there to put up my shelters. Uh, also, I wanted to make something more comfortable. However, because of 
uh, United Nations policy, I was not supposed to make them something too comfortable because the refugees are supposed to stay there longer if the, the shelter is too comfortable. So my budget for each unit was only 50 US dollar, 40, about 45 uh, euro only. That is why I could make only simple shelter with paper tube, with the even plastic uh, seat. Next, please. Year after, 1995, in the city of Kobe, Japan, we had a big earthquake. Uh, over 6,000 6, people were killed, and many cities were fired after the earthquake. And I read an uh, article on newspaper. There are many Vietnamese refugees living in Kobe, and uh, I thought uh, that uh, minority people like a refugee must have a more difficult time than normal Japanese victims. So I went to there, and it was so difficult. Uh, I read the article, they were gathering at the Catholic church, but it was so difficult to find the church because the city was totally burned down. Finally, I found that the, the Catholic church, but there are no building, only uh, uh, statue was remained. They are having morning service with fire outside. I decided to, to help this Catholic church, and uh, I, although I proposed to the priest, uh, why don't we rebuild the church out of paper tube, uh, because it's very inexpensive, but he thought I'm very crazy uh, proposing building out of paper after the fire. Uh, but I didn't give up. I commuted uh, every Sunday from Tokyo. Next, please. Then I got to know the Vietnamese refugee people, they are living like this in the park. Also, government started building temporary housing. They didn't want to or they couldn't move into the government house because most of the house, city is very condensed. The house was, temporary house was built outside of the city. Vietnamese people was only, uh, they had a job only in particular area and particular factory. So if they move out from outside of the city, they cannot commute. That is why they kept, they want to keep living in the park. However, uh, uh, neighbor Japanese people try to kick them out. They are afraid pa park is becoming like a slum. So I thought we have to provide them something more comfortable, healthier, but the, the, it has to look like very con uh, temporary looking to be accepted by neighbor keep living there. So we, I, uh, with my, my student, uh, built a paper chip, uh, a shelter, a uh, foundation, in order to make it very temporary, made of plastic beer crates. In Japan, there's two major beer company called Kirin and Asahi. Because Asahi made the plastic beer crate red, which doesn't go with the color of the tube. So I asked the Kirin company to donate the, the crates. And I still remember the day we received uh, the plastic beer crates, I thought Kirin company is very generous to donate we are great with the beer inside, but it was totally empty. We are very disappointed. <laughs> Instead, we put the sand back. We had to calculate to stand for the, the, the strong wind. Uh, so this is the interior. Everything was built with the student. We built 50 units. Next, please. Next. And then the priest trusted me to rebuild the church. Uh, it's very small, 10 meter by 15 meter. Everything was made by student. And uh, inside of the rectangular space, I put a paper chip of oval shape, which come from one of my favorite church uh, in Rome, designed by Bellonini. Uh, here's the priest. This is the first time that they could have a morning service under the roof. And he thought they can just use for a few years, but it was there for 10 years. Uh, because this became a very important monument of the city, they held many public services, um, uh, theater, uh, music and concert and so on. So it's not only religious place, but also the public space. And they decide to rebuild, the city was totally re rebuilt, and they decide to build more permanent building. I was very lucky to be hired. And that time also there's a big earthquake in Taiwan. We are asked to donate this uh, the church. So we disassembled, next please, and send over to Taiwan in the village called Pili. We built it with the student, uh, with the volunteer people, and this became permanent church and the community center in Taiwan. Then I wonder, what is the definition of permanent building, and what is the definition of the temporary building? Even building made in paper with student construction, 
this became permanent. There are so many concrete big buildings in the big city like Barcelona or Tokyo made by developer to make money. But other developer buy the land, destroy the original uh, uh, existing building to put new one. So I must say that those kind of building, even in concrete, can be very temporary if building was made to make money because there's no, no love. But even building made in, in paper, if people love it, this become permanent. That's the definition of what is temporary and what is permanent. Next, please. 1999, in Turkey, they had a big earthquake. I was invited to make a temporary houses. All the, the paper tube, beer crate, were donated free from local manufacturers. Children helped us to put waste paper inside the paper tube to make a wall more insulated. Next, please. 2001, west side of India, there was a big earthquake. Again, I was invited to make a temporary houses. Even paper chip was locally available, made by the local fabric company. They make their own fab, uh, paper chip. It's so simple and easy to make a paper chip to put the fabric for shipping. So this was so easy to get the inexpensive paper chip. Everything was available except beer crate. Because west side of India, nobody drink beer. Nobody drink alcohol. So my local Indian architect suggests me to use a Coca-Cola box. I didn't think that let Coca-Cola box go with the, the uh, with context. So instead, we made uh, the traditional mat floor and foundation. Many, some of them are used as a house. Some of them are used the, the school. This was built 2001, 18 years ago, and the at the beginning of this year. I received a photo from my friend in India. This house still exists as a local clinic. So it's incredible. People take care of them, they love it. So they use still 18 years. Next, please. One in Sri Lanka, 2004, they had big tsunami uh, created by Sumatra earthquake. This fisherman's village in south of Sri Lanka was totally destroyed by tsunami. And I was invited to make a uh, the, uh, the permanent houses. And uh, the government gave all the energy, the uh, kind of format of the floor plan. I did a little, little bit different. I disconnected the kitchen and the shower and the toilet unit uh, from the main part of the house, creating indoor-outdoor space. Because of the climate, always people eat or work uh, uh, under the shading. So I made a kind of flexible uh, semi-outdoor indoor space. Uh, as I expected, this space was very well used. And uh, the structure, this is made of the mud, cement, brick, locally available. And uh, in order to make uh, construction quicker, also all the victims, they lost their furniture, storage. So I made a wall with storage, just inserted. Uh, now we built 50 units. This small village become like this now. Next, please. 2008, uh, in city of the uh, Chandu, China, the year they had the Olympic, they had a big earthquake. Over 25,000 people are killed. Also, many schools, many high, uh, uh, elementary school, junior high school were destroyed because building was not well built. And also, I started building temporary houses. Uh, local government didn't want any foreigner to make uh, temporary houses. Instead, I met the schoolmaster. She asked me to build a temporary school. So I brought my Japanese student, work with local Chinese student for five weeks uh, with local paper tube. We made the, the nine classroom over 500 square meter, just by student. Next, please. This is uh, the, the inside of the classroom. As you see, student, student looks so happy because finally they could come back to their original home. This building also still exists there. Next, please. Uh, 2009, L'Aquila, Italy. Uh, L'Aquila is near Rome. This is old town. It's totally destroyed like this. Do you remember him? <laughs> Famous uh, former prime minister, Mr. Berlusconi. <coughs> um, he tried to bring G8 summit to his resort island, and when he visited the, the, the disaster area in Lakira, 
uh, people are having uh, the, the fire uh, uh, around the, the tent. He uh, t told the press, oh, they are enjoying a firework like a camping. And it's a terrible thing to say. So that, uh, that, uh, that he was criticized a lot. And he decided to bring G8 Summit to Lakira in order to get some support from the international community. And this is a former, former, former Prime Minister of Japan. Uh, we used to change the Prime Minister every year. Um, this was very uh, kind, uh, organized by Japanese embassy in Rome, uh, supporting my project. They organized a press conference with two prime ministers in front of journalists, with model, and uh, I'm, not, I'm sure uh, Mr. Berlusconi doesn't know what he's holding. This is a paper chip material. Because of this conference, I got a half million euro donated, so I could build uh, uh, because this city is very famous for music. They have a school of music, their own uh, uh, Philharmonic Orchestra, but all the concert hall were destroyed by earthquake. That's why I proposed to the mayor, why don't we rebuild temporary uh, music auditorium? And the, the mayor gave me the free land free, but as I had to don get donation. Next, please. So this is the next, please. This is the, uh, the com completion. Um, uh, still, I didn't want to. Although I had to have a very good acoustical insulation, I didn't want to use concrete for temporary building. I made a wall with a, uh, a scaffolding pipe with a sandbag inside to make a very good sound insulation. Exterior is just covered by red curtain, donated. Inside with a paper tube uh, with, uh, to have very good acoustical, insulation, acoustical effect. This is the opening concert. This concert hall still exists in Lakuila. Next, please. 2010, island of Haichi in Caribbean Ocean. They had a big earthquake. Uh, left half of the island is Haichi. Right half of the island is the Dominican Republic. Because this, the capital uh, city, Port of the Prince, was totally closed. Uh, the airport and the port was closed. I had to fly over Santo Domingo, which is the capital of the uh, Dominican Republic. Drove over seven hours to find out this situation. There's no... no materials available. So I made a team with a student in Santo Domingo, brought over uh, during weekend to train local people to build the very simple paper chip shelter by themselves. Next, please. 2011, north of Japan, we had a big earthquake, tsunami, and also nuclear problems. This is a typical evacuation facility under the big roof like a gymnasium. Government doesn't care about any privacy. Between family, there's no privacy. They had to stay there at least three months, sometimes five months, in order to wait construction of the temporary housing without any privacy. It's, they are suffering. So we went to there to provide the, the partitions. Next, please. It's a very, very simple system. Uh, the, the paper tube uh, with uh, just a uh, whole small paper tube just inserted and just cut in with a uh, fix with uh, the pin. And depending on the family, sometimes there are two of them, sometimes four of them, six of them. We can adjust the size and uh, very well organized. Can, uh, during daytime, they can open or uh, close uh, depending on the situation. Uh, there we, went, we spent three months all over the, 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 the disaster area. 500 kilometer coastline was totally destroyed by earthquake. We went to 80, uh, 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 facilities built near 2,000 units all over. Next, please. Then, after three months, four months, they have to move to this poor temporary housing built by government. Because the, they are built so closely, they cannot open the window, leaking, and no storage. So, this, and uh, it, there's uh, no acoustical insulation between next door, so you can hear the, the, the sound from next door. So, we thought that this is very poor, but also some of the city doesn't have enough land to make a standard single story housing. Next, please. So, we propose three story temporary housing with 20 feet container creating checkerboard pattern. Inside of a container is rather small. We put a, a bus unit, unit bus, and also a small ch children room. In between space is rather flexible, so we put a dining and a living room. Uh, this town needed 190 family unit, but they had only 
the baseball ground remain. Normally, they can build only 50 uh, single-story houses, but we built 190 in three months without any concrete foundation, only steel plate base and uh, stacking on top of each other. Next, please. This is a completion. This is inside the house. Even we made the, uh, the, the furniture by, with a student. But I also created a new problem. Now, the, the, the eight years after, nobody wants to leave. Feel, feel, feel very comfortable. Next, please. Uh, four years ago, in Philippines, uh, they had big earthquake and typhoon. I went to there with my student, working with local student. Uh, paper chip locally available, and also woven bamboo with nice ventilations. Uh, there is a big bus, uh, beer company in Philippines called San Miguel, but uh, they were so difficult, they rejected my proposal to provide me a plastic beer crates. So finally, I had to use the light Coca-Cola box. Next, please. Uh, again, three, four years ago, uh, in uh, Nepal, they had a big earthquake, and all the building made in brick, totally destroyed. And some of the building, traditional building away from the city, is very well made with a brick, with a wooden frame, doors, windows. I got the idea when I visited the, the timber yard, they cut the timber, but also they make a standard door frame in wood. So I decided to connect them by nailing and uh, leftover uh, bricks. I just put as a cladding, not structure. So anybody can do it. Next, please. So this is uh, the prototype and the wooden frame, just uh, the, uh, the brick is cladding. I made a stand, uh, the prototype, tested in Japan to meet the Japanese building uh, earthquake stand regulation. So also that uh, high uh, in the mountain where the, the brick is, was not available, we built the schools with the, the local available stone with the same construction method. Next, please. Two weeks before the earthquake in Japan, 2011, there was a big earthquake in Christchurch, New Zealand. This important Anglican cathedral was totally destroyed. And uh, somehow the priest of this cathedral found me uh, uh, there's uh, the article, there's an architect who designed the, the church free. So I got the email. I told them that uh, as long as the, 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 the church is used for the public, used not only the, uh, the religious service, I walk free. And I went to there and I studied uh, the, the plan and the, the elevation to find out uh, the, the geometries, uh, which was used again for the new cathedral in cardboard. Next, please. So this is what we built with the locally available paper tube, and also container as a, uh, as a uh, the, uh, pedestal and the office. And uh, here is the, uh, the, the uh, this is the last photo. This is a bishop, which is the most important part of this uh, person of this castle. She was very pleased with the space. Only thing, only thing she didn't want to was my proposal made, making cross out of paper. But I thought I wanted to convince her in Japanese by accident paper we call kami, which means by accident God. So I told her making cross out of paper is very, very, very uh, lucky so that she finally accepted. Now she really loved the cross made of paper tube. So now, even now, I'm working uh, in Sri Lanka after the terrorism and uh, there's many disasters all over the world. Um, I'm also supposed to support, I try to support Notre Dame as much as possible. So uh, the, even the, the, this becomes a symbol of the city. Uh, as long as people love the building, this can be permanent. I like to keep building uh, the, the building loved by people. Gracias.